I was not wrong at the end of last episode. I'm jumping right into episode two. Let's get it. I'm excited for the series. I want to keep going. So today's episode is going to be actually building a form, adding text boxes and like numeric up downs and actually adding customizability to your URL fuzzer. Previous episode was um, basically introducing the idea of the episode. So it was a longer episode than I was expecting at about 33, 34 minutes. The episode should be a lot shorter now. So as you can see, this was a very basic loop that for some odd reason I'm doing in <laughs> some form of a visual basic script, but you know, whatever it works, it works. So we're going to go in today and we're going to do a more advanced fuzzer. So we're going to hit enter here, enter public void EP to fuzzer. And I think that's actually how I'm going to name these. So not basic fuzzer. We're going to make this EP1 real quick. EP1. And I'm actually even going to call it that here because it just makes sense. EP1 fuzzer. EP1 fuzzer. All right, so let's get into episode two here. And we need to name the episode two tab. So um, episode two is going to be customize. And what we're going to do with this is start adding text boxes that we need. So what we can tell here right away is, again, we're going to keep this with numbers for this episode until much later when we start adding in things and I learn how to do it. Um, dictionary attacks. So that's much later. But for episode two here, we basically need to count how many integers we have, how many strings we have, and how many of those strings are just being used uh, in this code. Because this code realistically isn't that long. Um, so what we need to do is we need three numeric up downs and it looks like we need two strings. Um, and one of these is going to be probably, yeah, I know how we're going to do this. So, oh, EP1, excuse my nose. I don't know why it's whistling. EP1. There we go. So now... What we need to do is we need our three numeric up downs. Um, one, two, three. Who messaged me on Discord? Dude, I've told you a thousand times already. No, I don't know how to do what you're asking. Go away. Anyway, so we have our three numeric up downs. Um, and we need to name them. So again, we're going to use Crossfire just for the ease of the example because we know it works. Um, this is going to be num folder. And we're going to make labels for these two because we kind of need them. I'm not very good at layouts as far as like ease of use layouts. So we're just going to like do it. <laughs> um, folder number. And we're just going to like leave this here. And we're going to make this a little smaller as well. 91 is a bit big. We're going to do like 50. Nope, that's location. Actually 69, because we all know me. I love that number. It's hilarious. Anyway. So now, since we already have that one sized out, we can just drag this down and drag this down to size. And this is going to be min file number. So this is num min file num. And this is going to be num max file num. And we need our labels for that as well. Come on. I like lining them up that way. <sighs> Min file number. And this will be max file number. Max file number. 
There we go. Uh, clips in a little bit. We're going to move this stuff over three clicks. They're still all the same. Okay, so now we need a text box for the URL. Um, we're going to do a label. And we're going to put it just right here. Um, fuzzer URL. And we need a text box. Only needs to be single line, so we don't have to worry about much. And we'll just drag it all the way to the edge just to you know keep things simple. And we can do this as text ep2 URL. And there isn't really anything special we have to do with this, but we can add a um, starter URL into this so it always loads with this URL if there's nothing in the text box. And we're also going to add a security catch in the code to see if there's text in the box or not. So we need the URL to try. So we're going to do this for the starter URL. And that'll put that in, but that doesn't mean we can't put other URLs in it. So this is, as you can see, it goes all the way to um, the V, which you can see in basic code here. And then it does the folder number, the min file number, and the file type. And that's the other text box that we need is file type. So we're going to drag this down to here and we're going to do file type. And this is going to be a combo box. So basically what a combo box is, is a list of pre-selected items, but you can also do um, your own. So this doesn't have to be that long, but you can do a collection of items in it. And you just do them one per line. So .gz, .txt, just do common stuff, .zip, .rar, .exe, um, let's say 7z, dot, and we'll leave it as all those for now. And there we go. So it'll start as, you know, it'll basically be blank until you select something. So we have to tell it to select something. So CB um, file type. There we go. And, oh, that's right. I think I can just do, I don't know what that means. I, I thought it was something that it's not, but that's okay. So as you're going to see here in a second in the code, we are going to have security checks for this stuff to make sure that these text boxes aren't blank. But we do need a button to run things to. And we'll just like drag it to here, make it this big, and we'll do start ep2 fuzzer. And we're going to name it button ep2 fuzzer. Fuzzer start, sorry. And let's get in there. So as you can see in the basic text here, we're going to do borderline the same thing in um, the EP2 fuzzer. So I'm actually going to close this, hit new, and I'm going to copy this stuff to a um, notepad++ um, file on another screen because it'll be easier to look at in notepad++ than it is here. So I'm going to actually... There we go. So I'm going to close this just to, again, ease of use. And we're going to do this.text equals win title plus running ep2 fuzzer. I did start recording, right? All right, I was freaking out. <laughs> and then this.refresh. And this will probably be the only time I stack episodes as far as pre-recordings because I do want you guys to have the ability to make suggestions for the code, ideas for the program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so now we're going to do our variables. And we're going to do int folder num to keep things, you know, relevant. 
but in this instance we actually need to let it know that it's going to be an integer and then we do num folder dot value so that tells it to look for the value in that folder sorry we don't need the quotes there i just did it out of habit and then we do int min file num equals int num min file num dot value i wonder if i could do these as something else just skip that integer there doesn't matter right now int max file num equals int num max file num dot value and that names our files and then we do string file type wow did i just spell file with an <laughs> a y god i need to go to bed and then just quotes actually no we can do this as the combo box so cb file type dot text basically and then we'll do string basic url equals um text ep to url dot text close that and then we do um string file name which that will be auto generated by the code anyway and we do string my string web resource equals that and now we need to do our checkbox so we do a checkbox here and i'll just put it like right here because it feels easiest run ep2 fuzzer I don't know why it requires the checkbox um, for the way I'm coding it, but again, this is why you guys can come in and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, EP to fuzzer. So there we go. So we're going to do if CB EP to fuzzer dot checked. For some odd reason, this does not work unless you have the checkbox. I don't know why. Um, I probably will never know why and we're just going to leave it and then we're going to do the open do uh bool flag do try and we are going to do the um check first before everything so we're going to basically do if um Sorry, I had to burp and I was trying to hide it. Basic URL dot text um, equals nothing. Um, this is a very basic check. <laughs> uh, I realize there's a way better way I can do this. I just can't think of it off the top of my head at 1.30 in the morning, so we're doing it the basic way. If there's nothing in the checkbox, it's not going to work. Um, actually, basic URL dot contains does not contain HTTP. Yeah, that'll work. That's a good way to do it because that makes sure that it's a URL. Um, then we just do, we'll do like a message box because that's simple enough. Show no URL improper URL in uh, URL text box. So there we go. And then we can also do that with file type. If um, file type contains, we'll just say blank. Uh, if file, because at that point we can just do equals nothing. We can do, oh, that's two equals. There we go. Um, message box dot show 
No file type selected. There we go. And now we can move on. So now we need to set up our web client and everything. So we are going to do uh, first file name because we don't need to call the basic URL multiple times. Um, file name equals convert dot to string min file num plus file type. And then we're going to do web client just like last time. My web client equals new web client. And then we're going to do, actually, we don't even need to do that. We can just do my web client. Oh, we can do, oh, I just called it web client, whatever, client basic URL comma file name. And that should work. Here, we're going to do my web client, my web client. That should work. I'm guessing it's, oh, I'm forgetting the download file. My bad. Again, it's 1.30 in the morning. Download file. There we go. And that's actually all you need. So we even shortened up the code quite a bit, and we completely removed the need for this. And now we need to add our catches and our tr and our um, other stuff. So we do catch web exception ex, and we do the HTTP stuff, which I'm just going to copy and paste for the sake of time from last time because it is the same. And what we can actually do, I wonder if we can do this. I'm going to do this as a test. Um, public void exception catch. We're going to find out. Can I just put this here? Okay, so it doesn't know what the EX is. That makes sense. So what if I just do like, can I just do web exception EX? It knows what EX is. It's right here. Huh. I guess I can't. It was worth a shot because then that would make it even easier. I'm sure there is a way to do that. Let me know in the comments. Um, you know, best way to learn is to share ideas. But now this catch is done, so we can actually go enter and we can do min file number plus plus. We can do thread sleep. 50 thread dot what David want to do do and we do our flag equals decimal dot compare new decimal can I just do like integer because that's what it is in dot compare I can't no wonder I'm using decimal dot compare new decimal min file num I'm on max file num. Actually, and since I'm doing that, can't I just... Wait, does this have to be a new decimal right here? Can I just do this? Is there a reason I can't do this? We're going to find out together if I am slowly, you know making my code even better. And then we're going to do our while flag. And then this dot text equals win title plus completed EP2 fuzzer. This dot refresh. And there we go. So that is your second episode fuzzer. You know, again, it's a little bit more robust. And one thing I need to check is 
another thing is if actually it doesn't matter because I'm not calling it in this function at all. So in this function specifically, there is no mention of the first tab checkbox. So what I was about to add was a security check to see if this is um, enabled it in any way completely pointless because it doesn't need to be. It would be useless code to add to it. So what we're going to do now is actually something I can do better here would be nah, never mind. Not a big deal. So now we need to just tell it to call that function. So it's going to be ep2 fuzzer close. And we're going to start it. And start or um, whatever, it doesn't matter. So we're going to go, and as you can see, it got a little bigger. We're going to put this in here, and we're going to go episode two here. We want to select our file type, but I'm not going to do it yet um, because I actually noticed something I forgot to add. So as you can see with these minute, minute, uh, min file nums and stuff like that, uh, they start on zero, and they also only have a maximum number of a thousand. We're gonna make this like a million for the sake of what is that? One, two, three, one, two. That's a hundred thousand. So that's a million. One, two, three, one, two, and this is also gonna be a million. There we go. So now those numbers can be modified to their heart's content. Um, one thing that we also need to do is add a check for those. So if min file num is less than or equal to max file num, sage box show, please make max file number larger than min file number. There we go. So that should check if they are the same or if minimum is is higher than maximum. That is something I definitely forgot. And then we can just go build instead. And we'll simply copy this to here, replace it. And what we're going to do is check it, run it, no file type selected, and it checked for that. So it's still running. And it's going to run forever, actually. And I don't know why. That is not good. But it is going to legitimately run forever. So for some reason, it still started it. So what we actually need to do is I think we need to do, we need to do brackets here, unfortunately, which is what I was trying to avoid was very easy code. Um, and we do flag equals, I can't. I need to do the flag up here. It does actually go in order for checking stuff like that. So we'll do flag equals false. Because um, you can't do two lines of things under an if statement in that way. Flag equals false. And then... flag equals false. So it shouldn't run forever now. Shouldn't. I don't know for sure, but it shouldn't. We're just going to try it. Only way to learn. It's still going to run forever. I don't know why. This is the fun of debugging, boys and girls. 
You have no idea why something does something. And you need to figure it out. So it shouldn't move on to this. Is there like a stop? Can I add these into the do and it stops? So if I go, if I put them in the try, will it stop? It should. No, it's going to loop forever no matter what. What? If, wait. I think I get it. It's still looping forever. Hmm. URL fuzzer. We're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out together. So I know that I can control Z all this because this didn't change anything. And I can put it back to how it was to save on space and code. Come on. There. So, need to figure out how to stop it. And I'm actually going to pause this for now to figure it out on my own, and then we'll go from there. I realized a big stupid. That might fix it. I don't think it'll loop anymore. It's still looping. I thought that would fix it. Damn it. It's gonna run forever. All right, back to it. I had an idea and then I saw that, but now I'm gonna go back to it. All right, so I managed to fix it and I realized it was kind of a stupid thing that it didn't work. Um, that I should have added in the first place. So as you can see, I needed to add a greater than or equal to check here and then tell it to f that flag is true, which means everything is completed. Else it'll just keep running the loop until this is true. So now we can move on to testing it. And I'm gonna go build, build solution. Oh, nothing changed. Okay, so we're gonna go enter, copy, paste into the test folder and we're going to check the box. We're going to do folder number one, min file one, max file 25, and we're going to select the file type of GZ. And for some odd reason, it's downloading it as that file name. Why is it downloading it now as the file name? I just realized it's doing that. But as you can tell, it does complete because I can interact with the button again. But now I'm realizing the file type or the file name is wrong. I don't know why it's not getting the number. Oh, I accidentally did the number there instead of max um, min file num. That should work. So, copy, paste. Dot gz one zero is fine. We'll just do ten. There it goes. Now it's downloading the right file names, and it's just not finding any files. Uh, why not? 
Why is it finding nothing? Because I know it did in the last episode. Folder number is one. Min file number is one. Max file number is a thousand. Isn't that what I'm putting in the box? File folder number one. Min file zero. Max file ten. We'll try fifty. And we'll do a console. Um, we can't do that. We'll just do a message box. Show basic URL, because that is a string. And then we'll do um, message box dot show convert dot to string my web client dot download file. I can't convert that to a string. What I can do, I think, is my web client dot download uh, dot download string maybe. My a oh, I'm in ah oh, fucker. <laughs> Oops, I was gonna try not to swear in this series, but I just did. I realized it was in the wrong function. And we need to go into here. We need to do uh, message box. Is it because of the way the text box is set up? It might be. Message box dot show um, basic URL. So I might have to do this. A different way than I was thinking. Yeah, I know it. I know exactly what I did wrong. So I need to do um, basic URL equals um, basic URL plus um, so this is where it gets hairy. So. basic URL plus folder num plus I totally forgot this step. I shouldn't record these things at two o'clock in the morning. Min file number plus file type. That was the problem. I didn't ever actually name the basic URL ever. I just brain farted entirely and actually I might even be able to do that up here I can just do plus then again it doesn't re it doesn't loop through the file name so I can't but we're gonna go build close build solution so I do know why it wasn't working now that makes a ton of sense because I'm dead tired Select a file type we know works. One, one uh, zero, 25. Start. And it should download. I know these files exist. So I think what I'm going to add is a small basic console here. Because something's not right that it's not finding files in a place that I know they exist. I just had to wait for it to finish, basically. So I have an idea of why it's not working. But we're going to add a basic console, which I didn't want to do until episode three. We just need a label. That's This is going to be a very simple console. And we're going to name this label. Tech, uh, label. Log. And what we're going to do is label log dot text equals basic URL like that and then we do label log dot refresh and that should make that work 
If it doesn't, we'll do a message box because that'll actually stop it. But if I can do it all within the program, it'll be much easier and much better. So one, one, five, GZ, and it is checking that. Oh, that's a weird thing it's doing. Why did it stop on this? There is a file there. So I do know what's going on. So you see it keeps adding on for some reason. And I know exactly why that is. It was because I tried to take a shortcut. Don't take shortcuts. So we need to do my string web resource equals basic URL. That was the problem. I tried to take a shortcut. My string web resource equals nothing. And then this has to be my string web resource and that should fix it because I tried to take a shortcut so that was needed very much checkbox gz one five it's still doing it what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong here? I have no idea what's going wrong here. I really don't. Maybe it's the whole 2 a.m. thing, so I don't know what's going on. But I don't see the problem. Because this is basically the same code as before. It's just everything has a use. So basic URL, that's the URL from the text box, plus folder number, plus that, plus that, plus that. What is going on here? It's got to be, is it this maybe that's causing it? Maybe instead of this up here, we have it in here see this is the learning and the debugging we're going to put that back up there But for testing purposes, text that text build. And we're going to put this, this, that. That worked. Okay, so it's because of the way I had the URL set up for some reason. That's very strange, because I've done it this way before. Oh. We're going to do a new string. Refreshed URL equals text p2 url dot text watch 
So this URL only gets touched once. Refreshed URL dot text. So what was happening is it was basically naming itself here and then just adding on to itself. So if I go build solution, and this is why I'm trying not to really edit anything in this series, because I want you guys to see what the headache is also of making software when you're basically in the learning stages and we're all learning together really. Um, which is part of the problem here is the learning. <laughs> no, one actually exists. We're going to go start. As you can see, now it works. So that was the problem was the way the text folder or the text files were named. So if I actually go this, we do get different files, I think. No, nothing exists in folder two, three. I know there are other folders. I know there's other V folders. As you can see, there is a third. Um, but again, like I said, I'm rarely going to stack episodes. And I know I actually said something earlier about not making this one longer. Um, but I think every three episodes, I'll do a refresh. So there will be one more stacked episode. I'll do like a refresh and a go over of the code so far in the series. Um, so every three episodes, I think, I think every five would be too long, but every three episodes we'll go over the code, talk about, you know, the mistakes that were made in the code and go from there. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. The... I'm having a ton of fun with this because I'm learning with you guys, you're learning with me, and we're going to learn from each other. So I hope you guys are excited for the series. In episode four, you guys should see any suggestions you guys leave in the comments about um, what to do in this program. So I'll talk to you guys later. I know some of you guys that know how to code are going to scream at the top of your lungs for this entire thing. Let me know who you are in those comments down below, and I'll talk to you later.